I've substituted another transformer for the 12 volt supply after the shenanigans going on with the half wave uh, rectification that we had so we're just having a bit of a look at the ripple there there's two positions to uh, measure the 12 volt supply I'll see if I can point to them because none of these are on the circuit diagram so where we've got this oscilloscope probe at the moment where these white wires are that's coming straight off the first filter capacitor it then goes through an inductor onto the second filter capacitor so that's the first filter capacitor that's the second there's an inductor between the two of them which comes off those twisted wires and uh, this is the uh, very filtered 12 volt supply so looking up on the crow just tilt up to that that's the ripple uh, be good if the camera was level that's the ripple on the first part of the filter there and um, it, the measurement doesn't have to be too precise but let's say it's three divisions there it's half a volt of division so it's one and a half volts sitting on um, just under 14 volts so that's on the first part so we move the um, the probe across to the second be nice if that lead wasn't in the way wouldn't it you could see things a bit more clearly so I'll move that across now. <laughs> Let's do that again. It's amazing how these probe clips don't grip sometimes. And at other times you can't stop them from gripping. That bad. Right. And going back up here can see that's considerably reduced so the inductor is doing its job so we'll bring up the gain on the crow it's a rather odd looking waveform bouncing around a bit but it is being magnified quite a bit so we're on 20 millivolts per division there so the uh, the peak to peak is about four divisions so it's about 80 millivolts you notice how the it's full wave rectified the um, amplitude of each um, of the outputs of the rectifiers isn't exactly the same and that's why the waveforms a bit asymmetrical there but um, you can see the DC it's sitting on top of so we wind that right back and let's make the uh, bottom line of the graticule earth so that can be there and we'll go to 5 volts of division maybe a little bit more I think the crow needs a bit of an alignment there we go so that's um, 6 divisions at 2 volts of division so it's about 12 and a half volts here a little bit over 12 so hopefully now I can have a look at the driver transistor and the waveform going through it which is where the distortions coming from and um, I should say the mixing transistor and to see uh, where the distortions coming from before it feeds the 12BY7 valve driver and if you look very carefully down here the reason for all this investigation into hum and ripple and that is that um, this wire here was wrapped around itself, insulated and buried in this bundle of wires coming out of the transformer. What had happened, these two diodes here, which you can see this bit of um, figure eight cable, which is coming from the transformer. Here we go, transformer, figure eight cable. What all that's there for is the 12 volt supply on this is not regulated it's meant to be a full wave rectified waveform but the way this transceiver was it wasn't a full wave rectified waveform it was only half wave because this wire here which was connected was feeding one of these diodes and the other diodes the lead had been cut off I don't know if you can see that well or not but the lead's just been chopped off God knows for what reason anyway um, I thought 
one half of the transformer winding is at firewall or something and so they turned it into a half wave rectifier and added this capacitance onto the input filter to try and make up for the fact that it was half wave and not full wave but the ripple on it was still pretty bad so um, that's why I substituted this transformer thinking that this other winding I was either cut off completely or there was something wrong with it but having a look at it on the um, crow it seems to be all right so the next phase in all this is to try and get um or solder these two back on so that'll be that one and that one onto these positions and compare it to what i've got with this um, external transformer at the moment if i can get a ripple uh, as we got then 80 millivolts or less well then i'll just restore it to the original connections and then go back chasing the distortion problem on the mixer before the driver to um, to see what it is but at the moment or previously when they're running it as a half wave rectifier with that extra capacitance the ripple was so bad it was hard to see what waveform was on there and whether the distortion was due to the waveform sitting on so, top of so much hum so the next thing you'll see is um, these two connected again and I'll compare the ripples to what we've got now okay I've now connected the wiring on from the transformer its own transformer that is rather than the substitute transformer for the 12 volts and we've oh, help if I pointed this at the current and probably don't need that we've uh, earth at the bottom of the greater cure we look at the DC volts and we've actually got slightly over seven divisions at two volts a division so we've got slightly over 14 volts on the 12 volt supply and if we look at the ripple back to uh, the 20 millivolts per division we have a bit of a different waveform to previous but it's pretty much still 80 millivolts so it might as well run like that so that really leaves me a bit um, bewildered as to why that other part of the winding was disconnected why it was just chopped off when it's working properly so we're back to full wave rectification I can show, I'll just put the light on again coming down here I can um, I go back to half a volt per division we should have about one and a half volts of ripple here I haven't, I didn't measure it but <laughs> we're going to have probe problems again are we? so back up to here there ah that's it's slightly more actually that transformer is not as good as the one I had externally at that part there's uh, four divisions there of half a volt division so that's two volts ripple instead of one and a half volts ripple but that's not that's feeding uh, lamps and things like that it doesn't need to be as nice looking a waveform as the uh, the more filtered section which I'll go to here Yeah, we're going to have this fun again with a probe, are we? Yes, we are. So, and there's the 80 millivolts again. All right, so I'll put it all back together, get rid of that capacitor, and um, put the bottom cover back on, turn it upside down, and yet again and start looking at the driver problem with the uh, distortion so uh, that'll be the next update this is the spare driver board for the 2020 there's the uh, mixing Q251 there the, the dual gate FET now this is where the 12BY7 driver valve is or tube there's the output tune circuits for the mixer, output tune circuits for the Tor BY7 um, and it's all quite awkward to get to actually it's really difficult to show you on the transceiver itself connecting anything to it as a matter of fact it's really difficult to connect anything to it because a lot of the parts you just well in, in this case here's the band change switch it's in the way of all these components where the mixer is 
and uh, similarly the components around the Tor BY7 but around the Tor BY7 there's all, also more complication because if I turn the board upside down you can see underneath there this is the um, parasitic um, suppressor arrangement on the grid pin 2 of the Tor BY7 you just can't get to these components with the board in situ so what I'm going to try and do is show you various waveforms if um, we want to look at what's actually coming in to the mixer from the um, IF stage I can show you um, what's on the resistor R254 which is just called 54 which is way down I don't know way down in there so I've got the probe connected to that point at the moment so just tilt the camera up here and see that it's hanging out of the top of the radio there the probe so if I now go to transmit and turn the gain down uh, what we got up on the crow there is what's on that R54 or 254 so we um, open the gain up on the mic gain and it's not really triggered very well that's probably a bit better I can bring the intensity up but as you can see that's the uh, that's the two-tone test waveform going into that mixer and even if I bring it down uh, in gain a little bit that is flat out on the mic gain control and that distortion you were seeing on the output of the transmitter just isn't there so that's the input to that driver stage and that's fine so I'll show you I'm saying the driver stage it's the mixer stage I'll show the output of the mixer stage next that's another fun one to get the probe onto I can show you where that is on the uh, spare board I'll use the uh, resistor R260 otherwise known as R60 and that's yeah where is that oh yeah down in there it's it's um quite awkward to find actually yeah sorry about that it's just down in I, I'd lost it myself it's just down in there so I'll put the probe on that and be back shortly having got the probe on that point We'll go back to the oscilloscope. Now there seems to be a bit of carrier leak there. Um, as can be seen there, there's a bit of noise. And that's from the um, local oscillator injection, I would say. However, when we now bring the two-tone signal up, which loses triggering there, so we've got to change our triggering point and go to here. You can see the waveform's okay there, but if we go, I might turn the intensity up to help a bit. If we go any further, watch what happens. She's into clipping. So there's the distortion in the mixer stage before we even get to the driver stage, and this is the area exactly where the distortion is taking place and why we're not getting ALC. So that's. Uh, tuning of the mixer stage then. Anyhow, that's that's where the distortion is. So we're right in the right area to try and find uh, what that problem is and the next thing to do will be to look at voltages around that mixer 